Hello everyone, I'm Sheriff Wayne Ivey, and you're watching Hit the Streets. They say that crime will rise to the level a community will tolerate. In Brevard County, we have zero tolerance for crime. These are the stories. So welcome back to Hit the Streets, and tonight's episode is one of the busiest yet as the team got off to a great start, and man, they never slowed down. Tonight, we start in our West Precinct, where we got a quick update from Sergeant Fletcher on the various areas that were identified as high-intensity targets by our crime analysts, and then we hit the streets to go put bad people in jail. Our first case of the night happens in a parking lot near the intersection of Commodore Boulevard and Aurora Road in Melbourne. After undercover agents observed one of the occupants of a blue Dodge sedan, conducting what appeared to be a hand-to-hand -hand narcotics transaction with a person in a second vehicle. Once the exchange was observed, Deputy Kyle Shuck and Agent Sean Hannigan went to work approaching the vehicle's occupants. What's up, buddy? Hey, hand out your pocket for me. Hand out your pocket for me. It's all right, man. You're being detained at this point. You guys got your IDs on yet? No. All right. We got reasonable suspicion. We got reasonable suspicion of drug activity. I need you to step out of the vehicle. I need you to step out of the vehicle or you're going to be forced out of the vehicle. I need you to call your... I need you to take your seatbelt off and step out of the vehicle. Do it now. I need you to call... Take your seatbelt off and step out of the vehicle. We have reasonable suspicion of drug activity. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Step out. Step out. This is crazy as hell. Don't resist. Don't resist. Stop reaching into your pockets. Right now you're under arrest for resisting. You just gotta do what we tell you, okay? Face the car. Anything sharp? Well, as you can see for yourself, the passenger of the vehicle, Brian Green, resisted the deputy's instructions multiple times and had to be forcibly removed from the vehicle, at which time he attempted to discard a plastic baggie containing a small brown rock-like substance that weighed approximately 1.8 grams and field tested positive for fentanyl. Green was transported to Brevard County Jail on a total bond of $3,000 for possession of controlled substance, possession of drug paraphernalia, and resisting without violence. Okay, we didn't have to go very far for our next case as it happened at the same intersection at almost the same exact time as K-9 Sergeant Jerry Sheely and K-9 Deputy Lovell observed Jonathan King failing to stop at the stop sign on his bicycle before entering the roadway. While gathering Mr. King's information, a pat down for weapons was conducted at which time Deputy Lovell recognized by view and feel a straw that was located in his pocket. Drop your hat. What's the straw for? Sir? Be straight with me. What's the straw for? I would really appreciate it because I can't stand lying. I'm, I'm going to be straight up with you. What's the deal? These pants. Are These pants are somebody me. else's? No. <laughs> come on, you can at least come up with an original one. Thrift store, sir. And you never thought to check britches, nothing. Well, as we saw in the video, the straw was coated in residue of a substance that field tested positive for heroin. A further search of King revealed a wad of tinfoil in his pocket and an additional wad of tinfoil in his shoe that contained less than one gram of a substance 
that also field tested positive for heroin. King was transported to Brevard County Jail, where he was held on a total bond of $2,500 for possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. Our next case happened when agents observed Haley Haywood in the area of Aurora Road in Melbourne. Haywood, who was wanted on an active warrant, was located by canine deputy Tyler Haybart and Sergeant Kirk Gewinniger in a wooded area and was taken into custody without incident. Haywood was transported to Brevard County Jail on an active warrant for felony violation of probation with a no bond status. On a side note, and as a somewhat of a public service announcement, please never walk on top of a piece of plastic that is laying on the ground, because if you do, you might quickly disappear. How Sergeant Gwinniger was able to stay on his feet and never lose stride is beyond me, but thankfully he was not injured. Next up, K-9 Deputy Adam Steerwald, or Skinny as we call him, conducted a consensual encounter with Miss Sherry Farbston, who was riding a bicycle past the location where Deputy Shuck was conducting his initial traffic stop on Aurora Road. Deputy Steerwald engaged in conversation with Miss Farbston, discussing the fact that she was in a high crime, high narcotics area, and just openly inquired about how much dope she had on her bicycle. While Farbston initially lied to Skinny and told him she didn't have anything, she eventually did the right thing and openly admitted she had some narcotics on her bike. Farbston was asked to step off the bike and Skinny initiated a search. Following the discovery of multiple baggies containing approximately two grams of meth, Farbston was taken into custody for possession of methamphetamine within a thousand feet of a school as she was taken into custody immediately near the campus of O'Galley High School. Farbston was transported to Brevard County Jail on a total bond of $7,000 and will hopefully get some help to get her life back on track and off of drugs. Okay, next up, the dynamic duo of Agent Hannah Polito and Deputy Justin Knives encountered Gabrielle Capone after she was observed leaving a residence in the Melbourne area that is known for drug activity. Capone was actually riding with a friend on a bicycle, and when they observed law enforcement in the area, they hurriedly attempted to avoid the officers and actually crashed the bicycle on the sidewalk. As Agent Polito and Deputy Knives were checking on the two subjects' well-being, Agent Polito asked for consent to search of Capone's belongings and located approximately 0.79 grams of fentanyl and also a small amount of alprazolam. Capone was taken into custody on a total bond of $6,500 and transported to Brevard County Jail for possession of fentanyl and alprazolam, as well as possession of drug paraphernalia. All right, here we go. Next up, K-9 Deputy Lovell encounters a white female walking in the middle of the road in the immediate area of where Polita and Niavs are located on their case. Deputy Lovell identified the female as Heather Riley and asked for permission to search her belongings. Riley consented to search, and as you might imagine, Deputy Lovell located approximately 0.10 grams of meth in her purse. Riley was subsequently transported to Brevard County Jail on a $2,500 bond for possession of a controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. Now let's head up to the north end of the county where agents Jeremy Benton and Mitch Mathias are out on a traffic stop near Sisson Road with K-9 deputies Lovell and Steerwall. The initial stop was for excessive speed, but after K-9 Whalen conducted a free air sniff of the vehicle, things took a different turn. As you can see from the video, K-9 Whalen knew exactly what he was doing as the search of the vehicle produced a significant amount of drugs that exceeded trafficking amounts. The driver of the vehicle, Dontavius Hatcher, was taken into custody and immediately claimed ownership of the drugs, claiming that it was his for personal use as he had had a recent accident, not been able to get to the hospital. Yeah, okay, if you believe that, then I have a bridge in San Francisco, I will sell you. As you might imagine, we didn't believe it, so Hatcher was transported to Brevard County Jail by our transportation team for two counts of possession of controlled substance, trafficking in oxycodone and trafficking in the MDMA. Thankfully, Hatcher's charges amounted to a no-bond status, so hopefully a judge will put him away for a while where he can't peddle his poison any longer. Oh, and just to be clear, I don't have a bridge in San Francisco, and if I did, I wouldn't sell it to any of my friends because there's nothing in California I want to be connected to. Our next case takes us to Park Avenue in Titusville, where Agent Brandon Sellers encounters several subjects that were smoking marijuana in the parking lot of an apartment complex. As Sellers and other agents approached the individuals, one of them, Datari Mitchell, began to reach into his pants in an effort to conceal an unknown item. For safety purposes, Agent Sellers attempted to temporarily detain Mitchell to identify the item, at which time Mitchell attempted to pull away and further conceal the item. As you can see from the video, what Mitchell was trying to hide was five individual bags that each contained a gram of fentanyl and also a small amount of cannabis. Mitchell was also determined to be on felony probation for resisting arrest with violence, resisting arrest without violence, and also driving with no valid driver's license. Mitchell was taken into custody on a no-bond status and transported to Brevard County Jail on the charges of possession of a controlled substance with intent to sell, possession of drug paraphernalia, resisting without violence, 
and an on-site violation of probation. Now we head down to Coco, where Agent Kyle Pemberton and Deputy Spinelli are attempting to stop a dark in color Nissan that was driven recklessly on Clear Lake Road. As the deputies activated their blue lights to initiate a traffic stop, the driver of the vehicle decided to take off. We're in Sunrise Village. Sunrise Village. Stop it out. As you can see from the dash cam footage, the driver of the vehicle, Juanita Hosley, refused to stop the vehicle. And when she finally did stop at her sister's house, had the lame excuse that she didn't see the lights. And when she heard the siren, she only wanted to get to her sister's house because she had left her phone there earlier in the day. Oddly enough, though, she also admitted to not possessing a valid Florida driver's license. So I wonder if that could have actually been the reason for her trying to elude us. Either way, she took the ride to jail on a total bond of $5,500 for driving while life suspended or revoked and fleeing and attempting to elude. Mama, there goes that bad man. As here we go again with Shuck and Hannigan as they conduct a traffic stop on Lunar Lake Circle in Cocoa on a suspicious vehicle and a subject that had been observed coming out of the woods by Agent Zach Brown. Obviously, we've been looking at you. You came creeping out of the woods. You left the car running. I had the piss, bro. She was in the car, I know. Bro. It, it looks funny. You want it to looks get funny. Me now? You want to get me out? Like, come on, don't violate me to do it. Let's nobody's nobody's violating you. Feel me? Let's Believe me, I don't I violate rights. I had the piss, bro. I, I right. called you and out. And then you're creeping over the satellite. I had the piss. I had the piss, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm calling that, that you looks, out. That looks funny. You feel me? Like, the stone on that you piss. I need you like. Feel me like you want to know what was bothering me, like, and I'm telling you what Just need your license, bro. A lot of people go in there and do sticks, right? So, come on, now you want this? Relax, don't push my hand. He's got a bag in there. All right. All right, step back, man. We're going to get it, okay? I got it right here. Is it under your doors? There it is. See how easy that was, man? We know what we're doing. Anything else on you, brother? As a result of the search, Deputy Shuck found approximately two grams of cocaine hidden in the crotch of the driver, Travis Griffin, and also Agent Hannigan found alprazolam, oxycodone, and cocaine in the lockbox that was taken straight out of the hands of the passenger, Felicia Brown. Brown was arrested on a total bond of $6,000 for possession of MDMA, alprazolam, and oxycodone, and Griffin was arrested on a total bond of $2,500 for possession of cocaine and resisting without violence. Now we hustle over to Grove Avenue in Cocoa, where Agent Irizarry, or Izzy as we know him, conducts a traffic stop on a silver Nissan that had just blown a stop sign. As Izzy approached the vehicle, he could smell marijuana from inside the car and also observed a marijuana blunt on the center console. Izzy initiated a search of the vehicle and also a black fanny pack that the driver, Carlos Buckner, had been wearing at the time of the stop. Izzy's search revealed a single ecstasy pill and also $3,972 in cash that was located in the black fanny pack. Buckner was placed under arrest for possession of meth and also possession of a controlled substance while in physical control of a motor vehicle. Buckner was transported to Brevard County Jail on a total bond of $4,000. All right, folks, it's time to lace up your sneakers as we got a little foot chase action as Deputy Nives and Agent Polita conduct a traffic stop on a black Jeep Cherokee where the passenger, the Cedric Ryans jumps out of the Jeep and bolts. Go on, go on. Ryans was pretty quick, but not as quick as Agent Mitch Mathias, who showed Ryans why he played college football on a scholarship. The even better news is that immediately before getting tackled by Agent Mathias, Ryans tried to get rid of the football. Actually, it was a brown satchel that he was observed running with. He threw it in a dumpster about five feet from where he got tackled. As you might imagine, it had some pretty bad stuff in it, and also Ryan's passport, which really helps us prove it was his. Ryan's was subsequently transported to the Brevard County Jail for possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, trafficking in fentanyl, resisting without violence, and numerous other charges that gave him a no-bond status. On a side note, the driver of the vehicle had no involvement in the incident and immediately complied with our instructions. He never tried to flee or resist in any way and was only given Ryan's a ride on the way to his girlfriend's house. Oh, and one other thing. If you run from us, you're going to get tackled and taken to jail. So just save yourself the embarrassment and man up. Face your charges. Quit running like a punk. Well, that's a wrap on this episode of Hit the Streets. But as you can see, it was another great night for the Hit the Streets team and another great night for the citizens of Brevard County who can sleep safe and sound in their beds knowing that the brave men and women of the Brevard County Sheriff's Office are out on the street working to keep them safe. Folks, crime will rise to the level a community will tolerate. 
And in Brevard County, we have zero tolerance for crime. Why? Because this is Brevard County, where we're tough on crime and even tougher on criminals. See you next time on Get the Streets.